Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, <laughs> you can see my my captions come across just clear. Unfortunately, we are going to be missing the captions of three of our players due to some technical difficulties on my end. Um, but uh, but hopefully we'll we'll be able to reiterate if you if you need anything kind of uh, written down or shown shown in any way, we'll try and do that. But how however, welcome everyone to a brand new RPG Exploration Society. We are one episode in, and already we're getting some fascinating and weird characters, <laughs> which I love. Uh, we're teaching you the ropes of playing Savage Worlds, the fast, furious, and fun system from Pinnacle Entertainment, uh, and uh, focusing on the Deadlands setting. So joining me on this Exploration Society mission, let's go around and introduce the Society members here. Let us start with Megan. Oh! Starting with me, huh? Uh, hi, I'm I'm Megan Caves, um, and yeah, you can find me right here on some shows. I don't know, maybe you saw it once. Some of you people watched Wild Cards, um, and other things. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know how to introduce myself today. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, all right. Uh, moving over to Gnome. Hey, what's everybody? My name is Gnome, pronouns he, him, and I'm very excited to be here. I do I do a lot of stuff. I don't know. In lots of places. <laughs> but I'm here tonight. Ready, ready to western it up. One hundred percent. Uh let's go over to Noir. Uh howdy folks. Uh I'm Noir. Uh I go by He Bay. Uh I came here to Ye and God willing, and the sun rises, perhaps we might also haw as well. And that creek don't rise, we will haw. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, we welcome our fourth player, Nick. Introduce yourself, Nick. Hello, uh, I'm Nick Boylan, uh, by Rogues on Twitter. I'm a DM over uh, with Infinity Break, and uh, I'm here to also ye those haws. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, and I am Don Zook, executive producer and showrunner here at Saving Throw. I was also in the Wildcard series and uh, done, you know, I, I've been here for every show that's been on the channel. So uh, I will be your GM for this uh, over the next few episodes. So welcome. Uh, first off, some housekeeping. Saving Throw is a little bit like PBS in that we rely heavily on viewers like you to keep us going. Over 90% of our income comes from you, which means shows like this just would not happen without your support. So your Ko-Fi tips, uh, I say Ko-Fi, everybody says it differently. Your Ko-Fi tips and subs go towards paying our cast, our crews, uh, they pay for music, they pay for uh, games sometimes that we have to pay for, for accessories, for us to go to conventions and hang out with y'all and more. So consider supporting us on Ko-Fi and becoming a member of our Exploration Society yourself. Use exclamation point Ko-Fi in chat for a link. It's quick, it's easy, and with a tip of just $15, not even a sub, just tipping $15, you can send a toast to us, which we'll then read out loud and if you sub you get a bunch of swag which i have handy now this time here's uh here's the shirt which has the which is it is it keyed out <laughs> i don't know it's a green no, shirt I don't think so. it's look transparent like it. yeah it's, it's nice, nice. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay. which is even cooler really yeah. i mean you guys want transparent yeah. swag <laughs> uh but yeah you it's it's a cool it's a nice dark green hunter shirt with with the saving throw logo on it you get a mug which are have become very popular and uh they are in unfortunately limited supply so the mug you see here is not necessarily the mug you're going to get uh but it's very similar to the mug you're going to get you also get little pins that have been created for us by campaign coins that are the saving throw uh exploration society logo um, and at certain uh, certain amounts and certain tiers, you might get some bonus things like like, well, you might get some bonus things. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so um, thank you. And uh, I just and for you who are uh, considering tipping or subbing on Ko-Fi, uh, I have also uh, 
launched what I what I promised last episode. Uh, I, there are some stream rewards now. And uh, if you go to exclamation point unlocks, you can see what those rewards are. So every tip, every one dollar or a uh, hundred bits goes towards adding into that um, that tip jar, essentially. And slowly we'll unlock some things that we will be using in the game that we will be playing in this series. So um, I think it's pretty fun. The players don't know what uh is in there so uh don't look players um but yeah uh i i am excited to see what what gets unlocked with that uh having said all of that these episodes have been generously sponsored by pinnacle entertainment and we do thank them for their support so the pressure's off noobs you don't have to tip but if you like what we do consider a continuing pledge on ko-fi it really does help Thank you. And and last but certainly not least, I again want to give a special shout out to our longtime supporter campaign coins. Exclamation point coins and chat to uh, check out these amazing tools uh, for your table. Uh, we use them in game. We use them as bennies. We use them as tokens. Uh, you can use them as in-game currency even. Uh, it, they are amazing. I recently went through and completely um, compiled all of the coins and and everything that I had and laid them all out. I mean, I could literally run a small nation off of the campaign coins that I have. So, uh, check them out. They made our, 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 uh, pins for the exploration society. They're very cool. Uh, now real quick, not this week, but next week we are going to be doing a giveaway and I have decided it's going to be somewhat of a, um, of a Savage Worlds starter set. Uh, I am going to be giving away a Deadlands um, dice tray. Ooh. A set of Deadlands dice. Those are super cool. They're very cool. They're very cool. They're, it's like little red enamel with uh, yeah, gun right a gun and tomahawk and, and the, yeah. Yeah, there they are. There they are. And, and There's last but not least, a Princess Bride card deck for your action deck. So just all the tools you need, except for the rule book, basically, uh, which we will be giving away as well. So stay tuned. Come back to us next week for that. Uh, okay. Now, um, when, when last we left, uh, some of our posse had built the basics of their characters up to selecting uh, some skills. Before we jump into edges, we have our fourth player here now. Nick, welcome again. Uh, let's go through quickly and take a look at your character. Let me pull them up. And switch over. Okay. Okay. So your character, uh, we're going to do this really quick. This is a quick refresher for those of you who missed last week's episode uh, and, and missed how we applied perk points and skills and hindrances and all of that stuff. We're just going to kind of run through this. We did this off screen in the week between episodes so that we could kind of get started quickly here. Uh, but if you if you were curious as to how these things run up and then flow into edge selection and all of that, this is what you're going to want to see. So, uh, character name. Your character name is... Denitki. Denitki, which I love. That's, that's amazing. Okay. It so is character mistoking name... for thunder. Oh, okay. Which is my native language. There we go. Um, they are human, as all characters are, are in Deadlands. Even if you're dead, you used to be human. Um, moving on, the hindrances. So you selected three hindrances. Uh, impulsive is your major hindrance. You leap before you look. Stubborn is your minor hindrance. And vengeful is another minor hindrance. And uh, as a reminder, um, yes, <laughs> you, uh, you get to, up to four uh, perk points, depending on what you choose. A minor hindrance earns one point. A major hindrance earns two points. 
Uh, you can also choose more hindrances, but you don't get any points over four. So you chose one major and two minor. That's what most people do. And that gets you to four perk points. So um, why did you choose these skills in particular? What what What's your character kind of going through in this? Uh, whenever I think of like a character concept or anything that I can create, I'm always thinking about the concept of the character's personality and how I want to play them. Uh, I'm thinking of what would be, you know, dynamic within the game or the group dynamic. And for me, that might mean rushing into things impulsively or also like having a, an, a goal that may come up later. And these are hindrances that can create those dynamics later on in the campaign. Great. More for more for the the GM to work with. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Hindrances hindrances are almost there. They we've talked about this a lot, but hindrances really help, especially um, players who may not be comfortable with uh, role play or or are new to role play. They they give you sort of directions to go with your character to give you that friction sometimes that you need for for sort of a healthy party relationship. Uh, and, and so, um, I really enjoy hindrances and I, I try to import that mechanic into other games that I play as well. And so you got four perk points and it looks like you, uh, put all of those perk points into adding a skill, adding a skill costs one perk point. So you chose four, uh, perk points to go towards adding a skill. So next let's look at your traits. So let's see, you, you had at least five points to spin here to raise your attributes. So what, where did you put your, they all begin at D4, but uh, where did you put your, your five points here? I optimized for a shooter build. So I put most of my points in agility. Uh, I raised that to a D8 and kept my strength at a D4 uh, because I wanted to put more points into shooting and writing uh for the build specifically and then i just raised the others one die amount nice nice great um okay so um one thing that we didn't talk about we talked about a little bit but there are some derived um stats and the derived stat that you get out of traits your toughness is based off of your vigor die. So uh, it's two plus half your vigor die. So plus any armor that you have. So a vigor of D6 would uh, have a toughness of five. That's two plus three, which is half of six. Two plus three is five. If you had any armor, you would add onto that as well. Um, but uh, um, so here your vigor is a D6. So your toughness is a five. And um, then I have one for native armor. And you have one for native armor. So your toughness would be a six. It would, uh, or, or it would be a five with one in parentheses, I think next to it, um, to signify that that's armor uh, right. over your. Um, Innate. Yeah. Toughness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Very cool. So now skills. Uh, you had at least 12 points, but you added four more points through your perks. So you uh, you have 16 total points to use uh, to raise a skill to below or equal your trait level is one point to raise a skill die type above your attribute or your trait is double. So if your trait is D6, it would cost one point to raise it to a D4. But basically, that's buying the skill initially and another point to raise it to a D6. To raise it to a D8, however, you'd have to spend two points. Um, we didn't cover this before, so I, I do want to reiterate that in case anyone wants, especially in case anyone wants to adjust their character because of the next thing I'm going to say, your parry, uh, basically your ability to avoid melee attacks, is two plus half your fighting skill. So a skill of D6 would have a parry of five. That means that someone trying to hit you would have to roll at least a five to hit you. Um, so think about that. If you didn't put any points into fighting, where you want to uh, to get those 
uh, points, because otherwise your parry is a two. That means they just have to roll a two to be able to hit you. With a, with a melee weapon, it's much easier to hit you with a gun. <laughs> they don't have to, they just have to hit you with a four. Actually, it's a little bit, it's a little bit harder to hit you with a gun if you have a parry of two. But um, yeah, so think about that. Just think about it. We'll cover, we'll come back to that in case anyone wants to change anything. Okay, so you bought four extra skill points. Where'd you spend all 16 of your points? Um, so I put most of my points in my agility skills, but I also put points and made sure to buy, I wasn't sure about the fighting one, so I'll probably change that, but I did want to put, buy some skills, like those four points that I got were, I used to buy extra skills. Yeah. So like, Ones that I wouldn't have had before that I do have now were healing, taunt, occult, and then I added another for shooting to make that a D8 instead of a D6. Nice. Nice. And you got some intimidation and persuasion in there yeah. as well. So um, yep. you're going to be scary. <laughs> that's um, the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. All right. Very cool. Uh, does anyone want to change their... Um, their character skills now knowing knowing what you know now about toughness and parry no uh, i do need to change my skills because of weird science i think yes. we talked yes. about yeah so let's go back um real quick we'll delete key yep say goodbye and we go over to charlie warren the big bazoo itself Okay, so um, we're let's talk a little bit, bit about um, your arcane backgrounds uh, because a, a couple of you chose an arcane background, one of you chose the Harrowed Edge, uh, so you're coming back a little bit special. Um, but let's go back here real quick, and so we are adding uh, your perk points. We are adding two edges for you, gnome. Um, is that correct? Uh, there should, so. there should be th you three. Get th you get three total because yeah, yeah, you get one free one a as a human. human. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Then yeah, that's yep. perfect. Yep. Uh, okay. So what did we? So uh, let me let me cover your arcane background really quick, and and we'll talk a little bit about edges because this is all going to kind of fall into each other. It's like with any sort of character creation, you you can't. It, you kind of have to jump back and forth a little bit to to kind of cinch up some some places that that might uh, um, might have been sort of a hanging chad, if it as it were, <laughs> um, in the, in how you are um, picking things up. But uh, um, the edges are where your character really kind of comes out. Uh, it's it's basically literally for lack of a better term it's an edge your character has over other characters um it could be simple as you're just a little bit more level-headed than another person or it could be more complex like you've studied witchcraft your entire life um edges are enhancements to your skills and they are what differentiate you from other players uh characters could share the exact same attributes and skills but between hindrances and edges they could be played they could serve vastly different purposes and be played very differently with different workflows um it's one of the kind of fascinating things about savage worlds is is how alike you can build a character and then completely spread out and be completely different from each other um as we talked about as humans you all get one free edge because of the adaptable trait um but some of you spent uh, perk points to add more edges. Gnome, you spent two. Uh, you spent your four perk points to buy two edges. Uh, so, um, let's see here. The first edge that you are taking is the uh, arcane background, mad scientist edge, so that you can kind of dabble in the infernal. Uh, but there are requisites that we didn't take into account during our initial. Uh, character creation so 
to be a uh, a mad scientist or or uh, someone who studies the new science, uh, you need a D8 in smarts, a D6 in science, and a D4 in weird science. Um, and as with all arcane backgrounds, you need to be uh, they they must be taken at novice rank. Uh, although you can always chat with me or with your GM uh, if you all are all playing home games about being able to add an arcane background later on. Uh, you that's something you can do, but but technically these are backgrounds. This is kind of where your character is coming from. Uh, and then you use the weird science skill as your arcane skill. So basically, when you cast um which is a little bit different than how like a witch would cast or a huckster would cast um when you cast you will roll on the weird science you will roll your weird science die and you also get two powers to start with uh but you can add new powers by taking an edge to add new powers so with that in mind looking at your character sheet here um it looks like we need to bump up your smarts to a d8 and I'll do that. And then oh, we get this back. You've used too many attribute allocations. Um, yes, I know. So we're going to drop Vigor down to a D8. That takes that out of the equation. OK, so now we meet the trait uh, requisite. So now your science needs to be a D4. Great. And then I think that's it. Yeah, because when we moved that up to a D8, your weird science didn't have to be, didn't cost as much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right, because I boosted it beforehand. Yeah. Oh, hot dang. Okay. So that's that's Lovely. Where, that's where we stand. Um, uh, yeah, so there you go. So now you have a D4 in agility, a D8 in smarts, a D4 in spirit, a D6 in strength, and a D8 in vigor. Having a D8 in vigor... Again, your toughness then is going to be two plus half your vigor, which is four. So you have a toughness of six. Um, and uh, savage.us does that calculation automatically. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but you do have a fighting of D6. Um, so your parry is two plus half of that, which is three. So you have a parry of five, which is average. and and that's that's what most starting characters have. So that's that's great. Did you want to do uh, anything different with that? Nope. All good. Unless uh, should I just move everything into boating? I feel like boating <laughs> yes. was the appropriate uh, I, I readjustment was... in skills. Yeah, yeah. You definitely <laughs> want to be in boat boating. It's that's lots be of all boating. Yeah, we yeah. gonna go wild water rafting. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, great. Okay, so let's look at your edges then. Now that we've got that all cleaned up. So, uh, you have, um, uh, a, your one edge that you can take, uh, is your, let's see here, arcane background, which is in the Deadlands. You can't see the drop down that I've got here, but here we go. OK, um, we have uh, let's see. OK. Edge requires a science. Oh, we didn't we didn't up your science. OK. Uh, that's oh, we were going to drop a uh, weird science down one. Yeah. And boost up science or drop it there down. Two. I don't remember what it needs to be. OK, so science is up, up at a D6. Weird science is at a D6. OK. Great. Now we, now we are all copacetic. Okay. So, uh, arcane background, mad science, you can now take it. Uh, again, that's the great thing about Savage US. It tells you when you can't take something because your, your skills don't line up. Um, but now you have two more edges that you can choose from. Uh, what were you thinking? All right. Well, <laughs> I think when you're a prospector, there's... There's a lot of skill and a lot of survival. You got to be really hardy 
to survive out there prospecting, especially if you're going deep into the mines. This isn't like, like Char- Charlie isn't is isn't panning for gold. Charlie's in the mines digging for gold. Mm-hmm. You're going straight to the source, that, right? Straight to the. I mean, that's where that's where you get the best nuggets from, right? And also maybe ghost rock, but whatever. <laughs> I gotta go with a little luck. I think I gotta take luck as uh, as an edge on this one. Good uh, one. A little luck's gonna go a long way with an extra Benny. Luck is definitely something that's uh, that would be helpful for a prospector. So yeah, so you will get one extra Benny. We'll talk about Bennies a little bit later uh, when we when we finish up with character creation. But having an extra Benny never hurts. All right, mm-hmm. one you get one more edge. So, one fun thing about arcane backgrounds is you start getting, like, powers and abilities. But with the mad scientist kind of background and just the person that the big bazoo is, (laughs) I feel like I gotta go with new powers so that he gets a plethora of abilities. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what? <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna get you're gonna get four. Yes. Ooh, I only boy. picked two because I didn't. I, I forgot that mad scientist actually got two. So I will have to go look for for a couple more. But there's just something fun about like magic's cool and all, but I'm I'm an artificer at heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, what two powers are you adding? You can select those now. I mean, you can select them later, um, Mm -hmm. but, um, with Savage US, uh, it gives you the opportunity to, to add those new powers in now if you want, and it will just calculate them later, um, into your power level. Awesome. 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 So I thought burst would be a good one as a first power. That's fun. So, so you 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 basically um, have. Uh, so this is kind of a firing out kind of weaponized power here. Um, what? How do you envision this working? In other words, what is the trapping of the burst power for you? I I feel like everything that involves Charlie is is like his great grandpappy's pickaxe that he's had you know it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation and he's made some like upgrades to it um you know maybe a little maybe a little bit of that powdered ghost rock made its way in there who knows Uh, we don't talk about that we those are old stories right and and i feel like it's just a simple move of 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 taking it and hitting it into the ground and just an eruption of dirt and stone just blast out forward into that fan spray oh i love it so you kind of do a hammer down and bring the pickaxe down and it shoots out that's that is super cool i love it okay i think burst might be a seasoned power oh let's uh let's i i I, it should be wrong novice for me Okay, if it did, then by all means, because I love burst. But I feel like maybe I'm getting it confused with what powers it allows. I could have oh, copied it wrong. Thinking, or I could be thinking it's, it's, of blast. It's novice. It's novice. No, you're right. It's novice. It's novice. I was thinking mm-hmm. of blast. Oh, yeah. Blast. Oh, blast yeah. Blast. Oh, my gosh. Blast yeah. was amazing. If right? you don't think I want to go towards the blast route later, you <laughs> 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 That's like perfect for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, dynamite! Yeah. Oh, you, you want to get started quickly in your mining? Just go ahead and blast out that mountain. Yep, um, yep. blast it out. Okay, uh, what's your second power? So the second power, I feel like this this axe, uh, this this pickaxe, right? I mean, you got to be able to dig through places, and one one hindrance that that Charlie has is he's a big thick boy. He doesn't fit. Very well. Spelunking mm-hmm. in his thing. But what he can do is make something wider so we can fit. So I'm going to go with Burrow. 
which seemed really, really cool. And I, and I feel like he just puts the, the pick down. It splits off into three picks, pickaxes and just like and grinds up the dirt until he can like make his way through. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so cool. you have designed a, a ghost rock mechanism on your grandpappy's pickaxe that expands outward and then all of those pickaxes come down and basically just make a giant hole for you and yep. you can go in. Ah, I love it. Okay. Very cool. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now you have two more powers that you can choose. Yeah, I got I gotta go look for I gotta go look fishing through the book. <laughs> Yeah, go go look at those. Okay, we uh, while you look at those, we are going to move over to Megan. Now, Megan, you are a witch. I am, and your character's a witch too. Oh, <laughs> not funny. <laughs> Witches versus patriarchy. Am I right? Um, mm. uh, so um, now witches are not in the core uh, rule book. They're not in the oh, Sway no. book. They're not in the Deadlands core rule book. They are in the Weird West companion book, uh, which is amazing. Which And has more harrowed stuff in it, which is cool. Yeah, it has more harrowed stuff. It, it has more um, more things for mad scientists, like the Metal Mage uh, and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and uh, in other, other goodies, more powers, some edges, things like that. Um, we're not really going to dive into the companion book though this is this is more for you know just getting started but uh witches are super cool and uh they're magic users now witches are a little bit different from like hucksters in that witches use black magic not white magic not good magic no 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 if you want to be good take the blessed uh arcane background yeah. or or something else or shaman but no you took witches, which is black magic. Now, black magic energy in Deadlands is super plentiful. So it's all out there. And really all people need to do is just tap into that. And then just you have it. just a little bit and you've got you've got some power. Uh, however, you get some pretty serious side effects. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so witches... Uh, in order to take the witch uh, arcane background, you need a spirit level of at least a D8, which you have. Um, and um, you need a spellcasting skill of D4 or more, which you also have. You also get three powers to start off with. And you can also add new ones if you take the new power edge like Gnome did. Um, now, if I, unless I'm mistaken, you do not deal with the devil when you cast your spells. Uh, not like not like a huckster. Not like a huckster. You go straight yeah. to the source. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you pull magical energy directly from the Deadlands themselves. Yeah, and no Manitou's here. What's that? I said no Manitou's here. No Manitou's. Go past them. Um, and the worse off a place is dictated by their fear level, uh, which is something we'll kind of get into a little bit later, um, the better useling spells so mm -hmm. the more people are afraid, which gives powers to the Reckoners, who are the big bads of Deadlands, um, they are trying to seed the world with fear. And you are like, hey, there's a little bit of magic here when that happens. Opportunity. Opportunity. Um, <laughs> you get some bonuses as well. Um, but all of that dark magic has a price and mm. it slowly corrupts you. So... Uh, it sounds all well and good. You get all these neat powers and stuff, but uh, it slowly whittles away your sanity and your good senses. So even mm -hmm. if you start off thinking, I'm going to use this dark power for good, uh, the the Reckoners are just, <laughs> oh, you. And uh, you start to become corrupted. And if you become corrupted totally, uh, you are no longer you. And instead, yeah. you become evil and an NPC that is controlled by me. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. 
Um, so yeah, so don't lose your soul, you know? So that there's a, there's a, a chance every time you cast for you to gain corruption. And it's difficult to lower your corruption because you have to spend, basically when you get corrupted, you gain hindrances uh, that you don't get perk points for. <laughs> and um, you, the only way to really get rid of a hindrance is to use an advance to pay it off, essentially. Uh, so, um, so yeah, and once you lose all of, once your corruption points uh, are, uh, or basically you lose your, um, your control anyway, once you get too many corruption points and the character becomes mine. Uh, okay, so with that in mind, uh, what edges did you pick? Let's see. You you chose to add an edge, and yes. uh, and, and raise an attribute and raise an attribute. So we've raised the attribute. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we're uh, choosing an edge. So you have two edges to choose from because you're human. You get a free edge. And yes. Then you have another edge to choose from. So what did what what did you pick? Well, the first, of course, is the arcane background, which, um, and so do you want to me to talk about the powers with that here? Um, not here. We'll, okay. we'll get to powers in a second. Okay. Um, um yeah, just, just go over your edges. Okay. And the other edge that I took is Knack, um, which is a really cool Deadlands edge and actually has some other choices you have to pick. So I picked Breach Baby. Um, so in this particular instance, let me pull up where I have it here. Um, the breach birth, a baby is born, but first is said to have the uncanny ability to heal injuries. Your hero is just such a person and can spend the Benny to use the healing power. Uh, they don't need to roll and automatically get a single success, thus healing one wound. So I can use Benny's for that. And my thought with this, so my witch crystal void, she lives in the forest. She's, you know, kind of your traditional witch who keeps to herself um, but one of the do. ways mm -hmm. as they do yes of course one of the ways that she keeps the the people of a town happy with her witchhood is by being able to heal them occasionally <laughs> so that's that's how i'm thinking of this working nice nice so so sometimes people come to you because they know oh that that lady in the woods she's she's she'll she'll be able to fix you um even yes if, if we can't yeah very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my character in, in um, uh, Wild Cards Carnival uh, had the Knack Seventh Son, which oh um, yeah yeah uh, was was pretty uh, was pretty good because you have the ability to control fate with that. Anytime a Benny is used in his presence, he can spend a Benny of his own to negate its effect. I almost went with that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It is it's good. Very a lot of them cool. are good. Very very yeah. cool. Uh, okay, cool. All right. So now let's talk about your powers real quick. Okay. Um, so for my powers, I, uh, started off with fear because I love fear. Uh, it's just a fun power. Yeah. Um, and then I called it a uh, wicked witch ah, love for it. crystal. <laughs> and, uh, basically the, the trapping of it is that, um, crystal makes herself, look larger her eyes darker her teeth longer and her voice louder so she makes herself scarier to frighten people away so they leave her alone kind of like a uh, uh, gandalf uh when um bilbo uh he confronts bilbo oh. about the ring and he says do you take me for a conjurer of cheap tricks yeah, um yeah. yes like uh, that but scary like that indeed <laughs> like that yes. but scarier yeah but scarier um, yeah, yeah. So that is her, um, her uh, wicked witch, her fear. Very cool. Uh, she took, I took Bolt for her and I call it Howling Arrow. Uh, and I, the trappings for it is a ghostly and broken form of a diving black raven bursts forth from Crystal's hands, shooting and screeching at its intended victim. So it's like a smoky raven that just kind of comes flying at you. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. Uh if if we didn't cover this enough so what megan is describing are the trappings of a spell and the trappings kind of make this spell your own and i think it, this is really cool and and i i also bring this 
into it doesn't it, there's no mechanical difference in in the trapping so it still behaves it still does 2d6 damage it still has the same range it still has all these other things um but it looks you can customize how it looks which i i think is is great and i bring that into other systems that i play mm. and, and stuff all the time because i'm like okay magic missile it's a bolt of light that that fires out and hits its target okay okay but what if, what if it looked, what if? It looked like a raven that was smoky and, you know, it's like, okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Okay. So trap, <laughs> trap, trappings are, are very cool. Don't be afraid to use, um, you know, just wild trappings, uh, trapping descriptions. It doesn't do, it doesn't add any mechanical change to the spell, but it gives it that flair that, that, uh, that is fun to play with. Okay. Last one. Uh, last one, I took Wall Walker and I named it Creep. Um, so basically, she grows spider legs out of the side of her body so she can crawl up the wall and her body just kind of like hangs in the middle of it just to be extra creepy. <laughs> As a huge Whoa! fan of Dryder, I absolutely approve. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be the creepy one, but. Uh... <laughs> well, but Megan, I'm here. Megan also. On your lines and veils, you put bugs. Was, I know. You're the only one who did that. <laughs> I don't like them. I really don't. And so I was kind of like, oh. No, I don't like them, so I will become them. But uh, yes. That's how people I deal with their fears a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. That's Batman logic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's Batman. So does that make her Spider Woman? It does. Uh, at least yeah. at that point. Yeah. Kind of. In a really weird way. Okay. I love it. Okay, so that's Crystal Void in a nutshell. We'll get to gear in a in a minute. Um, let's uh, go to our um, our hero, our, our oh, undead. That's me. Um, so Noir, you died. You died, yeah. but you know, uh, sometimes six feet isn't deep enough. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes it'd be like that. You get out and about, and then you know. Yeah, and 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 now now Harold, Harold seems oh man, um, Harold seems like it's a it's a really cool thing to take. Let's let's talk a little bit about being a Harold. So, to be a Harold, you need to take the Harold Edge at creation. You can become a Harold later on, um, uh, but it's a little bit more difficult. Um, you can either take an Edge if your character <laughs> makes it to legendary rank. Uh, you can take the edge that basically guarantees you come back as uh, harrowed if you die. Um, or uh, your GM can, um, if you die and your your brain is still intact, your uh, GM can lay out cards, as many cards as you have ranks. And if you get a joker, you come back harrowed. Uh, so the easiest way to become a harrowed is to take it at uh, character creation. Um, to be a Harrowed, you need to have at least a D6 in Spirit, which I believe you do. Let's look at your traits. I yes. do! You have a D10 in Spirit. You're, you're great. And you must be a wild card. Uh, so if you're planning on GMing, you can't have a bunch of Harrowed extras running around. If, you're, if you have a Harrowed, that is a wild card. That's probably the leader uh, of something. So just remember that. They've got to be a wild card. Um, so Harrowed characters can take Harrowed Edges, which is very cool, in addition to the regular set of edges that are available to everybody. Uh, plus, you get plus two to your toughness and your spirit rolls uh, to recover from being shaken, and you ignore damage from called shots, except those that are made to your head. You ignore one point of wound penalties, too. Uh, plus, you don't breathe. You're immune to diseases and poison, and you don't bleed out. So the only way you can truly be killed is if they destroy your head. Mm. So uh, I would like to invest in a helmet, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, you're basically a, kind of a souped-up zombie. Um, but hold on, lest you think a Harrowed is just all superpowers there's um some hefty downsides too uh first of all you reek of death um animals are frightened of you 
and you literally smell like rot. Uh, and kind of the only way to kind of quench that is to uh, essentially drink uh, almost your body weight in liquor. Uh, you don't get drunk because you're not affected by poisons. Uh, but um, so it doesn't really help you that way. But uh, it does kind of pickle you <laughs> after a fashion. So, um, uh, but do know that um, if you don't do that regularly, uh, there will be a negative if you um, are trying to talk to somebody or anything like that, um, maybe trying to roll persuasion or anything, you might get some negatives there because people are just going to be turned off by the smell. Um, the wound that killed you is always there. It never goes away. Uh, you're fine. It doesn't affect you from a, um, a hit point standing, but, uh, if it's, if it's noticeable, um, in any way and you can't cover it up, um, that, that can be a hindrance as well to you. Um, but it's always there. Uh, you also need to eat a, uh, pound of meat, fresh meat or carrion meat every day to sustain yourself. And no matter how good you were in life, everything regards you as evil. Uh, you are considered an evil abomination. Uh, and just due to the fact that <laughs> you've got a demon in your head, <laughs> I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Deal. Um, we'll cover some of the mechanics of the demon including dominion and um, catching coup and other things as we go. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's um, those are some pretty big downsides um, because, you know, the demon just wants to control your body and your soul tends to be in the way sometimes and it can't do that. But maybe you can get a little extra oomph in your step by asking the demon in control of you, the Manitou, uh, if you can um, maybe get a little bit of their power. And yeah, you can let the devil out, as it were, and get a little boost to some trait rolls uh, at the cost of losing control. And if you lose control, similar to the witch, I take over and you no longer have control of a fellow king. So, all right. With that having been said about the Harrowed, um, what edges would you like? Let's look at this. You, uh, you did not take any perk points to take an edge, no. so you get one edge. Uh, so I think the edge I have to take is har uh, Harrowed, right? That is correct. Yes. <laughs> so, um, we had fame in here, but we're gonna we're gonna have to get rid of that because yeah. yes, if you want to be harrowed, you gotta take harrowed. So harrowed. Um, is, yeah, and, harrowed. But when you take harrowed, you do get a harrowed edge, which um, that's true. Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> oh boy, these some of these are uh, <laughs> some of these are rough. Um, I I didn't realize that I got a negative two when doing riding roles so yes because horses don't like you <laughs> you, yeah, you well, smell like death what? you they don't want to they don't hey, want to have anything to judge me i'm a good person this is <laughs> gonna be real fun when you and i meet in game uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. um but i mean i was thinking about getting a a like a spooky ghost horse but oh, then the i steed. Saw, yeah but then i saw supernatural ability and that raises an ability score by two dice Okay, let's see here. Yeah, uh, that's hella good. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's yes, amazing. supernatural attribute. So yes, the supernatural attribute immediately improves any one attribute by two die types. So uh, if you're at a D8, you immediately go up to a D12. Um, yeah. If you're, so and, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I, so and you can take it up to five times once for each of your attributes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, the reason that I don't have any other edges is because I used all of my uh, perks for attributes. So right now, my, my fighting is a D6. 
uh, I think I'm going to take supernatural, uh, supernatural attribute strength. Uh, and we're going to turn that D6 into a... So strength is not attached to fighting. Agility, it's uh, strength and vigor don't oh. have any related oh. skills to them. So uh, you'd want to raise your agility. Okay, so I, I'm a little. Uh, so here's my question because I was looking at some of the gear for weapons. Mm-hmm. And it was like damage is strength plus like a D4 or something like that. Yes. So so for melee weapons, they use strength for the damage die because you're okay. it's you know how hard you can hit, but it's not how you're finesse. Like if you're using a sword or or something like that, like you know you mm-hmm. have to know how to do that. Or if you're boxing, you have to know where to punch and stuff like that. But gotcha. the strength behind that punch or behind that, you know, stick or whatever that you're you're wielding, that's your strength roll for that. So um, if you want to be a melee person, uh, mm-hmm. having a good strength is definitely valuable for the power of your punches uh, right. or, or whatever you do. Um, however, it's not going to affect your fighting, which means it's not going to affect your parry in any way. So you could be like a glass cannon where you you can hit super hard, but then they can hit you back really easily. I mean, I think I think that might be the way that we're going about it, because his whole deal is he's going to sneak up behind you and just give you the the, the ooh off the bam, just right <laughs> in, just, just boom, right there. Wait, give give him the what? Give him the what? Ooh, off the field. Sorry, it's Chicago slang. Oh, like, right. it's, it's... <laughs> I can tell the I can tell not too many chance to rapper fans here. So, um... <laughs> so like, uh, and then you know, I'm I'm hoping uh, my my uh, my explodey prospector f- uh, friend and my spooky witch buddy get me out of damage before they hit me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally making a sucker punching. <laughs> so you're kind of like um um uh the shadow um in that in that you kind of appear out of nowhere and give a punch and then kind of disappear somewhere yeah. else. Although you're literally not be not doing that not yet anyway. You might be able to take an edge that allows you to do that later on, uh, but. Uh, but for now, you're just kind of being sneaky and punching and then kind of running yeah. away. <laughs> and I kind of like I kind of like that he's not good at what he's doing just yet, because he's like he's just an undead musician. So like so right. punch is how I got through my, my musician phase. So like you know, he's gonna get through his. Can relate. Yeah, yeah. He just he just, he didn't really um he he didn't ever really need to be a fighter per se uh, right. um, or at least a trained fighter so but now now he's up against things that are a little bit over so okay so supernatural attribute agility is what you're wanting oh I was I was still doing strength. oh you still want to do strength okay totally yeah, cool. so, yeah, yeah. That, I, that I want that one hit to hopefully knock people flat <laughs> got it okay um, so your strength is now at a D10. Mm-hmm. And I do think there's sneak attack in this, right? Um, the drop. Yeah, you can get the drop uh, on someone. It's an opposed roll, uh, your stealth uh, versus their notice. So um, okay. if if you uh, succeed, you get you get first hit. If you uh, believe if you get a raise, you basically get the drop and uh, are are able to um to do some bonus damage that way awesome yeah that, that's all I'm, that's all i'm going for it's just sneaking up high people and then cracking them with a chair <laughs> um okay very cool all right let me save that okay and uh let us come back to the uh and Nick, your edge. So uh, you chose, or your perk points were allocated towards skills. So you get the one free edge as a human. And mm-hmm. what did you choose? I chose duelist. Oh, nice, nice. I, I saw like that this. there were no, uh, you know, uh, gun toting. 
people yes. in this group. So I feel like you need one of those. Yeah, that's smart. So the duelist edge does what? Um, I get two extra hole cards at the start of a duel. Great. So it's a little bit circumstantial in that uh, a duel needs to be called out. Uh, either you can call it out or uh, an opponent can call out a duel. Um, and then we, we play a hand, basically, um, uh, similar to poker, but you get two extra cards in your hand that, that you can use to make uh, your... Um, your poker hand. So, and again, the better hands in poker mean better things for you in that duel. We'll cover duels later if we get to it, but, uh, but it's super helpful if you're in a gunfight and you go, you, you and me right now, we're going to have this out in a duel. Which as a character with the vengeance hindrance, um, that's why I picked duelist actually yeah. as my edge so, yeah. to kind of. Now yeah. here's the thing with, with, dueling uh which again we will cover this a little bit later but um so if you duel someone um if you shoot first and you uh wait oh, wait, wait, wait what is it now nah, we'll cover it later we'll cover it later because i want to i really want to get that right because dueling is a really fun mechanic in this and it's basically the way um it's one of the ways that that your regular cow pokes and stuff can um, kind of do the the fancy card tricks that your hucksters and your witches and your heralds and your ever that they can all do, but but kind of on their own terms. So it's it's a really cool cool mechanic. Okay, so those are edges. Uh, I hope if you if any of you have questions about edges, feel free to drop them in chat, uh, and we will um, try to cover them. Uh, towards the end of the game, but uh, or towards the end of the session today. Uh, but um, I want to kind of keep this moving and uh, see see how far we can get with with everything. Um, so awesome. OK, edges are done. Let's do gear. Uh, so real real quickly, you have two hundred and fifty dollars in starting funds in Deadlands in Savage Worlds Deadlands. In uh, in regular Savage Worlds, I think you start with five hundred, uh, but you know this is the eighteen eighties. Things cost different here. <laughs> they're they're not as expensive. Inflation hasn't quite gone so out of control. So you have two hundred and fifty dollars in starting funds. Um, now you could have double that if you spent a perk point to double your starting wealth. Um, but now is really the chance where you can kind of flesh out your character and kind of describe a little bit more of what they kind of look like their their appearance because now you're kind of getting into the clothes the accoutrement of your character uh i personally will not charge you for regular clothing so shirts pants boots hat i'm not going to charge you for anything of those that's normal <laughs> we'll get into that in a second plus i will let you have a uh, weapon, either a pistol or a melee weapon, uh, but it's of the El Cheapo variety, which we'll talk about in a second. Any other guns, special holsters, uh, any gear, bedrolls, backpacks, things like that, melee weapons, or any infernal devices that you'd like will cost you extra. Okay, the one thing that I will allow is Grandpappy's pickaxe. So that that one that one you inherited. It's just a pickaxe. It didn't do anything <laughs> special. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, real briefly. So, El Cheapo gear. What does that mean? Um, El Cheapo gear. El Cheapo horses. Uh, they're 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 serviceable. They'll get you by, but they have some qualities that that um, make them unreliable. So if you critically fail a trait roll with any El Cheapo gear, that gear immediately breaks. So if you try to shoot with a gun and you critically fail your shooting roll, the gun breaks. You don't shoot. And if it's a ghost rock gun or has ghost rock bullets, uh, uh, that can be disastrous for you as well. Um, uh, 
horses, on the other hand, they don't fail. They don't die if you critically fail a riding roll or anything. <laughs> However, the horses do get uh, two minor hindrances or one major hindrance that you'll then need to contend with. So um, uh, it, it does behoove you to get rid of El Cheapo gear as soon as you can, um, but uh, it, it can cost you money. Um, and then uh, I want to talk a little bit about wealth die uh, or the wealth mechanic basically in Savage Worlds. So um, after you spend this initial money, your $250, um, any future transaction that we have will use the optional wealth mechanic. So rather than keeping money, keeping track of money uh, all the time, this mechanic allows you and me to basically roll for whether a character is able to purchase something or not. It's very simple. So you all have a wealth trait, basically, of D6. Um, and uh, it, it, it functions like a regular trait. So you will roll with that. Uh, anything that costs $10 times your wealth die. So for you all, it would be $60. Anything that's $60 or more requires a roll of the wealth die. Uh, anything uh, less than that, so $59 or less, you're assumed to have bought it, no problem. Um, but if you're trying to buy a lot of things that are like $50, I'm going to call you on it and we're going to roll a wealth die. So don't do that. Um, if you succeed in your, in your, uh, with your wealth die, then, um, you buy the item, but your wealth die is reduced one die type. So it goes down to a D4. Um, if you fail, uh, you decide, you can either decide not to buy the item and that won't affect your die type, or you can buy it, but you're gonna go broke. And that has additional consequences if you go broke. If you critically fail, you just can't get the item no matter what. So you can't buy it and go broke or anything, you just can't get it. It's just impossible to get at that time. So um, keep that in mind uh, when, when you're getting things. Um, if there are some infernal objects that are you know, thousands of dollars and stuff like that. So if you want that mechanical arm or something like that, like we will, we'll, we'll need to talk because that's going to be outside of your, uh, your wealth at the moment. Um, but you can get wealth. Uh, you can add to the wealth die by getting rewards and stuff. So we'll dictate that as we go. You know, if you get a bounty for, you know, bringing in a bad guy or something like that, your wealth die might go up to a D8. Um, and then you can go out and try and buy something special with that. So there we go. Um, I think it's way easier to track things. You don't have to track anything. You just either buy it or you don't for the most part. So I think, I think that's really fun. So, um, does anyone, uh, Nick and I kind of went through buying gear and there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, I don't think. Or you, you, you have a gun, you have a quick draw holster, which allows you to quick draw, gives you, gives you a bonus in that uh, instance. But And a horse, uh, a non-El Cheapo horse. Uh, but beyond that, I don't think there was anything, um, no ghost rock mechanical items or anything special from there. Um, in fact, you're probably the most kitted out with, you've got trail rations and... Um, bedroll and all of that stuff so and matches <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know it's just that's kind of like a habit that i do i'm like man i don't know if this setting is going to be like did you buy that right G are you sure you can light that fire did you buy those matches and so i was like no i'm gonna be ready just in case and that's great however there is a mechanic for that type of thing where um we'll get into more of this in a second but um uh, I can ask, did you buy those matches? Because you're not starting this fire unless you did. And if you don't have matches, you can say, you know what? I didn't buy those matches, but let's see. Wait, wait. Let I me smash to... some rocks together. Yeah. I will spend a Benny to say that, yes, I did buy those matches. Ooh. And then you, you give me that Benny and then I go, oh, yeah, you did buy those matches. Absolutely. Ooh. So, um, so there is a way to get some things. Um, 
So you have some narrative control uh, of things that happened in the past, but you've got to spend a Benny to do it. Um, okay. So, so Nick's kind of taken care of. Um, uh, Megan, mm-hmm. what, what is Crystal Void? Is, is, does Crystal Void have anything um, that we need to, to really account for here? Um, I have that she has like a staff or a walking stick, basically, that she probably tries to whap people with occasionally. Yeah. Um, I have, I I decided to take a a ghost steel knife. I think it was an option. So I found my nod seems fancy. Maybe it's just some fancy knife she uses. Um, and I think she's, I I think she's a, a, a pipe smoker. But I don't know okay. if that's super important. Just seems nice. like something that might come up. <laughs> oh, you should have gotten my pipe. Oh. I know. Well. Oh, well. Throw it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll go over the Wasatch Mountains. You'll, you'll, you'll get it at some point. <laughs> I'll get it. Um, uh, cool. Okay. So, um, so pay for the pipe. Pay for the ghost rock knife. Um. I'm going to have to, cause yeah, that's, that's in savage.us. It's not in any of the books. So I'm not a hundred percent sure what, what a ghost, a ghost steel, rather a ghost steel knife can do. I can um, also just have a knife if need be, but yeah, I mean, I figure it's, it's probably, it's probably something you don't need to sharpen. Uh, at least yeah, it's like tougher. harder. Yeah. To yeah. You could probably Stuff cut like through, you know, I'm, it's not like a lightsaber or anything, but. Um, yeah, sure. cut, just cut through a demon with it. Right through. It's not magic or anything, but it's it's, no. it's super sharp. It gets plus one damage and one point of armor piercing. Oh, Thank you, okay. Point. Sweet. Plus one damage. It is in the book. Well, I I looked. I didn't see it. But anyway, so go steal knife. Very cool. Um, okay. Uh, Noir, what are you thinking? All right, I've already started. I, I've been shopping this whole time. Oh. Um, <laughs> So here's the cheapo crap that I'm rocking. Uh, uh, I've got cheapo, cheapo boots, a cheapo duster, um, cheapo backpack. Oh my goodness! Uh, here's <laughs> what I spit. Here's what I spit my money on, though. Uh, I've got uh, cigars, five of them. Dead nation wire. We'll get into that. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how you're going to smoke cigars since you can't breathe, but um, it's all the about aesthetic. aesthetic. It is no, the aesthetic. Man. Yeah, you're just going to have to like it light it really quick and then alive. Yeah. Um, he holds it up to like someone else's, someone else to like. He's like puff on this, just yeah. just and then just get, it, just get it down a little bit. Just get it down. Yeah. Down. Okay. Okay. Good, good. Good. I was joking about this before, but then I saw it and I'm like, well, I have to take it. So I have an armored hat. <laughs> nice. Okay. Brilliant. Very good. Uh, I did spend money on my guitar. Uh so I spent the eight bucks for my guitar. Good. Um, because you can't have a cheap little guitar. What do I look like here? Um I have seven sticks of dynamite. That'll be fun for later. Uh okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sharing my churro rations with you guys, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I could I couldn't eat it anyway. Yeah, you'll be fine. Oh. You oh, need to that... buy your meat, though. <laughs> yeah. I've got my ghost steel Bowie knife. Um, and... Oh, that must be it. The ghost steel Bowie knife. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what we're... Okay. Um, and I'm thinking about getting some, uh, some knuckle dusters. But other than that... Oh, and a bow and arrow. And that's it. And a bow and arrow. Okay, cool. In case I have to do something range, but really I just want to get in there. Now a bow and arrow is is going to be your shooting skill, which you are unskilled at. Ouch. Oh, I I am pretty trash at that. All right. So that's a D four minus two, um, to to use your bow. Uh, is and it's the same thing for like throwing like an axe too, right? That's shooting as well. That's not shooting. That's athletics, I believe. Or yeah. Um. Yeah, I believe that's athletics. Oh, okay. Then uh, I'll drop the bow and just get uh, some uh, hatchets to throw around. Okay. (coughs) 
Uh, let me see here. Okay. Um, all right. That sounds good to me. I just don't want you, I mean, you can totally have a bow, but I just, I, I, I don't want you to feel like, oh, oh, why did I take this bow when I can't hit anything with it? No, that, that, I'm, I'm glad you caught that out. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I really, I'm just, I, I want to get in there and go full Jason and Michael Myers on people anyway. So now it's just, uh, where's case scenario? I mean, really, I was, I, I got the bow more to just, uh, at some point in the game, tie a stick of dynamite to the arrow. <laughs> <and make something. laughs> uh huh. But um, I'm like, I can attach it to a hatchet. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Where do you keep the dynamite on you? Just, just asking for reasons. In my, in my backpack. In your, in your cheapo backpack. In my cheapo backpack. Yep. Is it El cheapo dynamite too? I don't know. I paid for it. I I bet that El cheapo backpack is very flammable. (laughs) All right, y'all make. I'm I'm gonna pay for this bag. You got (laughs) got it there, Noir. Just. I'm like making a mental note. Yeah, I'm, I'm buying you these have the cigars and the dynamite and then the cheapo <laughs> backpack. I don't know, man. Yeah, as <laughs> Chad says, what can go wrong? Go I, wrong. To I, I came here for chaos in age. <laughs> He's like, if all that's left of me is my head and my helmet, that's totally fine with me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I will say that dynamite... Um, uh, there, there are some things to, to know about dynamite. Um, it has a one in four chance of exploding if it takes six okay. or more points of damage. Oh, no. Okay. Um, throwing dynamite, like throwing anything, uses athletics. But yep. setting it, if you wanted to set it to explode, uh, uses repair. Um, mm. However, to, to set it, uh, you're going to need like a blasting cap and um, a fuse and a plunger and stuff like that. So, oh, so I just uh, mm, so you probably got- you're probably going to light it and run away is going to be your yeah. your best bet. That that's not going to be a repair roll <laughs> to do okay. that. Uh, but yeah, if you want to like set it to, you know, be a controlled explosion. Yeah. Oh no, there's this this is all chaos. This <laughs> is all like- <laughs> this sounds chaotic. Yes. No, I love it. I love it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, OK. All right. Um very good. Uh, okay, and then gnome. I have a question regarding weight. How yes. how much weight are we allowed to carry? So um, I'm not going to track encumbrance, but okay. it's, I'm going to rely on you to kind of have some common sense. Um, I like Nick and I were talking about. You know, they had a lot of items, a lot of trail rations, a lot of. Um, uh, uh, matches and and I have like guns. canteen, canteen, and stuff all these... like that. I was like, I'll just put that in my saddlebags, which I then yeah. put on my horse. Yeah, and and you can put it in your backpack, which allows you to kind of you know carry it a little bit easier. But but if you're adding a lot of items in, um, and especially if they're heavy items, uh, you we're going to have to talk about how that's going to affect you. But um, yeah, in okay. general, I'm I. I hate encumbrance. <laughs> that's super fair. I it's mean, second like, next I to run. money to, to track. So for me, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So for for shopping, I got a I got a backpack, a canteen, a drill, an iron skillet, box of matches, a shovel, um, uh, and I am gonna pick up an El Cheapo mule. Oh no! <laughs> no! Oh, oh no! Oh, don't, no. don't don't give it the dynamite to carry. Just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Good. Dude, well, we'll For see. more on that, folks, tune in to <laughs> World Canary. Cards. Yeah. Um, oh, rest in peace, learn, mule. Learn how to make your own Canary the Mule drink, alcoholic drink, by watching the video. It's true. It's got Pop Rocks. It's got Pop Rocks. It's It's actually very cool. It's good, but it will it will like spray you? in your face. Yeah, yes, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Season three, episode thirteen. Thank you, John Doom, for that. <laughs> had that at the ready. Um, 
Okay. Uh, I picked up some trail rations, uh, spectacles, because that's actually a hindrance for me. So I do need a pair of spectacles. Yeah. Um, if I lose or break them, that's butts. Um, I am taking two sticks of dynamite. I'm a I'm, I'm a prospector. That's reasonable yeah. for me to have in my possession, and I'm gonna grab the inventor's apron. What is that? But do? I would like to alter it as just like not mechanically, but like oh, the devil's apron. Is it the devil's apron? It's yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's, you know, the inventor's apron. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some people call it the inventor's apron. Most people call it the devil's apron. Yeah, it's, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's worn underneath all that clothing anyways. Y'all can't, uh, he's got a poncho on. You, you, you can't tell what's under there mm -hmm. because it's it's not necessarily an apron. Uh, because it's an armor piece, I would like it to just be like bits and pieces of like shovel. <laughs> okay. So it's 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 like plate armor essentially mm -hmm. underneath, um, mm -hmm. in the shape of an apron to protect the the front. Because he doesn't shoot, he's got terrible eyes. You don't want to put a pistol in that man's hand. <laughs> he'll he'll shoot his own eye out. That's, um, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and then I I don't know what you want me to do with Grandpappy's pickaxe. I've got 164 buccarinos left. Do you want me to just give them to you for like is are we gonna call it like a war club? Like mechanically? Um because it's kind of bladed, but because it's not a blunt object, it it would puncture no. pierce. No, they're um let me see here really quick. Uh, so I believe, um, I believe there is a pick in, um, maybe the, um, the Savage Worlds book. Oh, I didn't even think to look in there. Let's do um, a little search. Pick. Axe. No, that's not coming up. Not coming up. Okay. Um, pick. Uh, let me see here. Um, okay, a mining pick. Uh, picks are unbalanced as weapons and inflict a negative one penalty on the user's parry and fighting scores. Their damage is strength plus d6. Okay, cool. I will take it. Um... Because I think the the war club or whatever also had a negative one parry because it's a two handed weapon. Right. So yeah. That that was just something I was accepting. Yeah. Basically, yeah, oh. you're gonna you're gonna have to ha you're gonna have to swing it two handed, and that that's gonna make it harder to block people. However, your inventor's apron or your devil's apron gives you plus two armor, so you have I think your toughness is a, a six plus two for your armor. So uh, technically at an eight for that. Plus um, it has some heat repellent um, ability, even infernal heat. Uh, so uh, you, you have some protection from that as well. So, okay. And does, um, does my hindrance also give a plus one to toughness? For going up a size, I can't remember. Yes, uh, I believe okay. it's gonna be a nine. Dope. I'm really thick, y'all. Yes, well, yeah, size plus one. Your running die goes down to a d4, and your pace is a minus one. Um, <laughs> so but... tell, tell, tell me something I don't know, all right? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> but yeah, um uh that's something you gotta you gotta kind of work with um let's see i don't have um okay yeah there we go um you can always work on the um the pick and try to upgrade it to make it more balanced so that you could use it 
as a one handed weapon or uh, increase its, you know, fighting capability, basically. Uh, and so we can talk about that uh, um, with advances and such to, to try to improve that if, the, if you want to kind of go down that route. But okay, that's cool. definitely something you can cool, do. Cool. Okay, that is gear. Uh, any powers? Did we not cover? Uh, you, there's, I think there's still some powers. Yeah, you have two more powers left. Yeah. All right. I picked. I picked two more powers. Um, stun feels reasonable to have like mini dynamites, essentially that I could just chuck or leave in place and run um for stun uh which is a novice rank and then mm -hmm. uh because i am kind of playing a weird aggro tank uh i'm gonna go with protection oh ah, okay so i'm gonna beef up that armor even more although it, it's a recipient so i can also give it to somebody else it looks like yes Yes. Cool beats. But uh, you you have to be able to touch them. Yes. Well, as long as they're not running faster than me, then we'll be good. We'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe that is it. So we have covered uh, hindrances, traits, um, skills, edges, gear, powers. The only thing left for you all to tell me is what is your character what is your character's worst nightmare i'll give you a second to think about that and um i will remind while you are thinking about that i will remind people in chat that we do have uh a a goal tonight um that we are aiming for and i'm going to do some uh some of our um uh, we have some toasts that were sent to us. Thank you so much for all of you who have donated. Uh, let me see here. Why is that not updating? That should be updating. Okay. Um, we are, it looks like we are at uh, $205. Thank you all so much. That's, that's very kind of you. So now uh, your toasts, uh, Neva and Omar. Which is give stitches? <laughs> I, I believe that. Yeehaw. Uh, Lupus Phoenix says, Ron for president. Appreciate oh, you. Oh, Ron. You. Good old Ron. If you're wondering who the hell Ron is, watch Wildcards <laughs> ETU. Uh, Neva and Omar <laughs> again came back. Thank you for being so generous. No way we are going to let this reward get away from us. I wonder what they're talking about. Hmm. Uh, DJ Regular, can't wait to see this posse in action. Yeehaw. <laughs> Thanks, DJ. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, exclamation point, Kofi, K-O-F-I. You'll get the link. You can tip there, just regular, just like you used to. Um, you don't have to sub up or anything. You can just tip regularly. Uh, a tip, I think, of a dollar. I think you can tip as little as a dollar or as much as you like. Uh, and all of that goes towards unlocking the rewards, which um, we we are. Uh, we're yeah, I, I, I love the, the the top tier. I would love this group to get to the top tier because. Mm, mm, that would be fun. So. Um, consider, consider that. Thank you so much. Five foot Latina. Thank you. If you have a toast, let one of the mods know, uh, so that we can, we can get that, um, calculated, uh, appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Exclamation point Kofi. All right. Who's ready? I am. <laughs> all right. Um, it's in regards to, to, oh my goodness, it's in regards to my secret. Um, if I don't, 
if I don't kill everybody involved in my murder, I don't get to go to heaven. Hmm. So your nightmare is not being able to fulfill your dying before I get every set of a gun involved. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's kind of also one of the things that the demon taunts me with as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, I mean, if after me, this posse, it might be spider, spider leg, which is <laughs> like, be, that's be. kind of crazy. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave it to future Dom to uh, be able to read murderers. Um, I did not write that well. Okay. Who's next? <laughs> I can go. So hard. <laughs> All right, Nick. I'll go. Um, the fear of losing freedom or being held down in one place. Ooh. If there's nowhere to go, if like the four corners of the world become smaller, that's terrifying. Which is an interesting thing to put in perspective with like the timing timeline of this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Campaign. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um go. I've I've got I've got it. Okay. Uh fear of losing magical ability. Okay. All right. You're being normal. That's a scary thing. Being normal is scary. <laughs> yeah. Can't yeah, relate. I, know, I don't like it. Uh, all right. No. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's it's any prospector's fear. Fear of being buried alive. Start to dig your way out. <laughs> Not that I know. Just, uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's what the dynamite's for, right? Just you know, don't use all of your power points so that you can burrow out of. You're right, right. It's gonna be a little little difficult to to bury alive, but. All right, all right. Thank you so much. I love it. Um, okay. Well, thank you, Five Foot Latina. No toast noted. Um, we love you, regardless. Okay, we've got a little bit of time left. Uh, so I do want to uh, reiterate, if you at home have questions that you would like us to try to answer uh, about character creation, about how the game is played, anything like that, please uh, send them in and we will try to do our best to answer those for you. Um, now uh, I'm going to talk a little bit, bit about game mechanics that we uh, we'll be employing there's there's just a little bit and I don't want to get too deep into it because Savage Worlds is really it's like a board game for me anyway I learn much better when I play uh, rather than trying to read or someone telling me the rules or anything like that but I do think that there are some things that that you have to have kind of a little bit in the back of your mind so that you know when to ask the questions <laughs> when they come up so I'm just going to cover a few things kind of briefly and uh and we'll we'll expand on that a little bit more oh smoke beard thank you for gifting gnome a subscription oh oh <laughs> uh uh i will say as a subscriber now gnome you can send a uh a benny to either the player <laughs> pool or to me. Oh, 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 Returns that is. is. Do, I, I do I help stack us or do I help bone us? Uh, I would <laughs> say I this is that kind of game. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to give <laughs> anything to Dom. No, I, all right. I, I, I feel like I, th this is very specifically for Noir. I feel like I owe you a Benny. 
Yeah, you do. I feel you like I owe you a penny. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Let's try not to push any daisies. I'll add it to our pool. Oh. <laughs> I can hear Aris in the back. <laughs> 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 um. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Christian, I think you were asking if there are public URLs for these characters on savage.us. We will post those so that you can all take a look gander at, at them and see see what's making them work. Uh, we'll post those this week. So um, have a good night to you. Okay. Um, all right, players, get one. So if you want to give a Benny, which we're about to talk about right now, just what do Bennies do? Uh, what is the Benny mechanic? How does that work? Uh, if you want to give a Benny out after you hear about it, <laughs> all you have to do is sub on Ko-Fi uh, or uh, Twitch. Uh, Ko-Fi, we prefer Ko-Fi. Uh, it's just easier. It's easier to track. Uh, plus, your sub goes towards our uh, our goals. So um, only only Ko-Fi subs go towards our goals. Twitch subs, unfortunately, do not. Uh, but uh, yeah, so consider that. Okay. Let's talk about bennies, shall we? Uh, when starting each session, uh, each player gets three bennies adjusted for any hindrances or edges that may add or subtract from that total. So uh, you all, I believe, have three bennies, except for Gnome, who has the luck edge. You get one extra benny, so you're going to get four bennies. All right. So. Uh, take note of, uh, the, the bennies that you have, um, know that you have that, um, whether you need to write that down or whatever, I'm not going to keep track of your bennies for you. So <laughs> I will keep track of the ones that chat has gifted to you. However, how many do we start with again? You start with three, every session you get that replenished. Okay. So you start with three, um, Unless you have a hindrance or edge that affects the starting binnies. Um, uh, yes, real quick on character names. Noir is playing. Othello King. Yeah, <laughs> Othello King. Uh, Megan is playing. Crystal Void. Gnome is playing. Charlie Warren <laughs> and Nick is playing I'd see everyone else said their their name then you have to say Janitki there we go <laughs> okay uh um I those uh, I'll have those all written out for you um next week you'll 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 see everybody's kind of character cards um now that we have them all built but uh that's it uh okay so um the gm at the start of a session gets as many bennies as there are players so i get four bennies for myself uh, i also get two bennies for each wild card that i control but we're not we're not there yet uh bennies are used for many things in savage worlds uh so you it's really good to keep track of them and it's really nice to have them at your disposal. Uh, so don't forget you have one extra one currently in your player pool that any one of you can use, but you can only use it once, right? So you don't all get one extra one. It's just for Benny. It's just for one of you to use. Uh, here's a list of things that Benny's can do. You can reroll a trait roll, basically a trait or skill roll except critical failures, okay? If you roll double ones on your dice, we're gonna to get to the wild die in a minute, but if you roll double ones, that's a critical failure. You cannot re-roll that, and a critical failure means something really bad happens. Uh, you can use a Benny to unshake in combat. Basically, rather than rolling to try to see if you can unshake for free, uh, you um, can just hand me a Benny and say, I unshake, and it's taken care of. Um, we'll, we'll, when we get into combat, we'll talk about shaking and all of those effects, those status effects. Uh, you can also use a Benny to soak a wound in combat. 
So in order to soak a wound, you make a vigor roll, but in order to do that, you have to hand me a Benny. Uh, you can draw a new action card. Cards are used. Remember, we talked about the Princess Bride card set, which you can win next week. Uh, uh, your action card determines your um, uh, where you are in the uh, initiative order. So face cards are usually the best, going all the way down to two. Um, jokers are wild. Jokers always can go first or whenever they want, and you get bonuses for jokers. Uh, so if you don't like where, say, you got a two or a three and you want to be higher so that you can get your spell off or something like that, you can hand me a Benny and you get another card. You've got to stick with that card, though. Uh, you cannot choose between the cards. So you're stuck with whatever you roll or whatever you draw. Uh, you can re-roll a damage roll. That's very important. You can regain power points. That's very important for all of you uh, arcane users out there. Uh, and most importantly, we touched on this before, but you can influence the story. So did you forget to buy that shovel back in town? No, you didn't. You handed me a Benny and you bought that shovel in town. Remember? Oh yeah, you did. Uh, maybe you didn't talk to the key witness in the trial. Oh no, you did. You did. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, do you get the magic lance that is able to kill the dragon immediately uh, upon just showing up with that lance? No, unfortunately you don't get to spend a penny on that, but little mm -hmm. things uh, that kind of help the story along and, and make it so that you don't like go, Oh, why didn't I pick that up? That's, you can quickly get that out of the way by spending a Benny. Um, so those are the things that you can do with a Benny. Uh, so keep those in mind, especially the things in combat. They're going to be very helpful. So to do any of those things, you have to spend a Benny, which means you remove it from the pool of Bennies that you have. When you're out of Bennies, you are out. You don't magically replenish Bennies unless... Uh, I reward you a Benny or in the very specific case of saving throw show, <laughs> the chat can give you a Benny potentially by subbing to the channel. Um, but in general, when you are playing Savage Worlds, the GM is essentially in charge of giving Bennies and Bennies can be given for any number of things uh, for uh, really playing your hindrances for being particularly clever in solving a problem. Uh, for doing some good RP uh, or just impressing me with something or usually making me laugh. Um, <laughs> that, that will, that will work uh, sometimes. Um, or, you know, it's generally if you make everybody laugh, but uh, um, that's, that's how you can potentially get bennies. And I may be turning to chat sometime and go, is that worth a Benny? Um, so chat will kind of have some, uh, some, some play in that. Um, but, uh, uh, that's the only way you can get your, your, your bennies back. Uh, and also I think if you draw a joker, you also, everybody gets one Benny, everybody gets a Benny. So if any one of you draws a joker, you all get one Benny. Okay. Um, yeah, you can send bennies to either the players or to me. Uh, okay. Uh, so, okay, let's talk briefly about, uh, I'm realizing we're probably not going to get to combat this, this session, but that's okay. Cause there's so many other, there's so many things to cover. Things. Yeah. Uh, so let's briefly talk about the wild die. So in Savage Worlds, you roll two die for any of your trait rolls. Uh, and you roll the, the die that is for that skill or trait. So let's say it's fighting and you have a D6 in fighting, you'll roll a D6. You also get, because you are wild cards, you get to roll one extra die, which is an extra D6, which is the wild die. You use both of these separately in your roll. Um, so uh, when you roll, let's say you're rolling to hit somebody. So you roll your fighting. You will roll both your fighting die, your D6, and your wild die. And uh, you take the totals of both of them. You do not add them together. 
you never add your wild die to your regular die. They are calculated separately. Um, but um, if one of those is a four or above, generally, that's a success. So uh, if they both roll the highest amount of the die, that is called an ace. And it's essentially exploding die, and you can re-roll that die. So if you say you are rolling your two die in fighting, and your regular die rolls a six, you can re-roll the regular die, but not your wild die. If your wild die rolls a six, you can re-roll the wild die, but not your regular die. That stays the same. Does that make sense? Sort of. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Practice, but I think yeah. It it, it takes a little bit. It, it, once you do it a few times, and and we do like a combat with it, it it starts becoming kind of second nature. But just know that you're always rolling two die, no matter what. Uh, your your wild die is om almost always there, except for uh, damage rolls. You don't get a wild die in your damage rolls. That's that's a big note. Um. Uh. Okay, so that's wild die, that's aces. Critical failures. Uh, if both your uh, trait die and your wild die come up with one, that's a critical failure. And critical failures can um, manifest in many different ways. And sometimes a hindrance will compound what a critical failure means to you or Perhaps your background, uh, something may may contribute to that. Uh, it could be as minor as, you know, your El Cheapo backpack breaks. Um, it could be, depending on the situation, your El Cheapo backpack breaks and the dynamite falls out and uh, explodes. That could happen uh, on a critical failure, just depending on the circumstances. I, feel a no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know anyone who would do that, but... I kind of do also know someone who would do that. Uh, so um, you cannot reroll critical failures. You can reroll re regular failures and you can reroll them as often as you want with a Benny. Uh, but um, until you run out of Bennies, basically, um, you cannot share Bennies unless you have an edge that allows you to share your Bennies. So uh, if you're out of Bennies, and you're trying to re-roll something, you can't just go, hey, can you give me a Benny? It doesn't work that way. Unless you have an edge that allows you to give a Benny to another player. Um, and that's kind of the basics of things. Uh, so we know about parry. Parry is two plus half of your fighting skill. Uh, toughness is two plus half of your vigor trait. And... Um, that's essentially all you need to know. Um, so I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to open it up to chat because I don't want to get into, uh, into, into combat, into this little scene that I've kind of created for, for combat. So we're going to jump in next week. It's just, we're going to start playing the game and uh, it's going to be fun. And we'll get into combat and all that stuff. We're going to cover chases. We're going to cover dramatic tasks. We're going to cover uh, 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 quick encounters. Uh, so those three things are going to happen at some point over the next three episodes. Uh, I know a lot of people have been curious about chases. I will cover that. Uh, so so never fear. We will do a chase. Ooh, sweet. Um, I've not yeah. even gotten to play one of those. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a pretty cool and and once you kind of do it a couple times the the mechanic is actually pretty straightforward and easy but I I can see that it it's a little confusing cuz you're pulling out a new deck and all of these things. Yeah, it's there's a lot. You you need to have a few decks kind of handy and um when you're playing uh uh Deadlands or when you're playing Savage Worlds rather. But uh once you kind of realize that everything kind of works out a little bit okay. Um So, do you all, you players, do you have any questions, comments, concerns, 
hopes, dreams, wishes <laughs> it's for moving forward as as we are now taking you out of the character creation uh, world and we are now placing you into the fear-soaked hills of Deadlands. I got a dumb question. <laughs> if that's way too early to ask, how does leveling work? Like, yeah, no, that's not a dumb question at all. So um, you advance and uh, each rank is composed of uh, four advances, basically. basically. Um, so from novice, you go to seasoned rank. From seasoned, you go to veteran, veteran to heroic and heroic to legendary. Um, I will say that Savage Worlds is uncompromising. <laughs> and you can easily be taken out by a mook uh and um with nothing you know they could hit you with a frying pan and if they ace enough they can take you out uh so it's very rare for uh characters to make it beyond like a, a veteran level but it is possible uh so uh in between those ranks are advances that you take. So you have done your novice rank. You have three advances and then you're at uh, seasoned. And then you'll have another three advances and then you're at veteran. Uh, and so on and so forth. So um, we are going to advance rather quickly in this, uh, in this game. So over the next um, few episodes, we are going to uh, showcase that. And um, chat has unlocked something about advances that we will we will get to in a minute. Thank you, chat. Um, we are very we're very close. We're almost halfway to our final goal uh, that I have. So um, consider that. <laughs> but uh, um, yes, so so we we are definitely going to be covering advances uh, as we go. And and for for GMs considering running this. Um, the advances, uh, there's a really great explanation in the Savage Worlds core book about advances and when to give them. Uh, so I highly recommend you read that. But in general, it's it's mainly up to you and kind of the speed and pace that you want your characters to go at um, and and what you want to throw at them. The the Savage Worlds is not like d d in terms of encounters where you you have to have, you know, uh, bad guys in a certain power level uh, difficulty rating um, or, uh, you know, that matches your party. Uh, you can send the dragon after these characters because they have just as much of a chance of killing the dragon as novice characters as they do as legendary characters. Just with as a legendary character, you probably have taken advances and leveled up some attributes, taking more skills, taking more edges, things like that. Um, with uh, edges, or sorry, with advances, um, uh, again, we'll, we'll cover this a little bit more, but with, with each advance, uh, sorry, in each rank, you can um, raise your attribute, raise one attribute, one die type. So uh, you've already done all that in Novice, but um, when we get to seasoned rank, you can raise an attribute. You don't have to do it that that advanced. You can do it at any advanced within seasoned, um, but you can raise an attribute one rank. Uh, and then you can also choose a new skill. You can choose a new edge, um, or I think you can choose two skills to raise um, uh, or one edge um, with each advance. So. We'll, we'll we'll cover that a little bit more. Oh, I see. Okay, we are we are less than half to our final goal. Less than half. Heck yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> uh, they they have not advanced yet. Um, uh, chat asks. We we have not advanced. We they, right now, y'all are novice novice level baseline heroes so i i will add that as wild cards you even though you're novice wild cards very similar to other systems where even if you're level one you are still considered better than average 
So an average townsperson would have a D4 in every attribute. Um, and, you know, a blacksmith might be skilled in smithing, so they might be skilled in repair or something like that. But, you know, they're not going to have a lot of the other skills that, that you all have. So um, uh, you're already better than most at things. Um, but yeah, yeah, novice, novice characters... We had, in the very first episode of Wild Cards, we had a character almost die because they got one-shotted by a bad guy. Um, yeah. it, it, it's, it's a very swingy combat system. Um, but it just, it just happens. We also had another episode where a big bad was taken down by one of us <laughs> before anything could happen, before they could even get a spell off or anything like that um so um Sad day. yeah so um yeah there's 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 a lot of a lot of fun things um yeah that's why you're called wild cards because they've got a little something extra uh are we using the wound cap optional rule um i am not using the wound cap optional rule Basically, the wound cap optional rule uh, allows you, uh, basically says that if someone gets really lucky, uh, they won't kill you outright. All right. Um, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to go easy on you. <laughs> if someone rolls really well, because it goes both ways. Right. Uh, uh, and um, I am I am uh, I'm generous in many other ways, but I'm not going to. Um, use a wound cap but it it is smart if you if you're just introducing people and you don't want to kill them off right away because lord knows i've built many a character that i've never wanted to see get killed off and they get one shotted and and are out of the game and that's that's silly uh i i won't let that happen to you but we're not going to use the wound cap rule i'll put it that way i'll let chaos reign <laughs> <laughs> Let the gods decide. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, they're not gods; they're reckoners. Um, <laughs> I like this chat being support of trying to give us levels and stuff and wound chat. <laughs> yeah, chat chat wants to help you. Um, I mean, they could help you a lot. Uh, if if we hit this goal, they can help you a lot. If we gang, hit this goal. gang, come on, chat, let's get it. I need all the <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can, uh, Megan, I believe, is is uh, facts. Megan has had, I think, the most aces of, of any player at the table. I think if you go to our wiki, they've, they've done the math. Chat has done the yeah. math and calculated how many aces each of us had in wild cards and, and oh. Megan, <laughs> Megan is by far uh, the person who aced the most. And, and there, I aced it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there are apparently um, something that, yes, there, the, yeah. And, and uh, there are clips of, of, um, you know, an acing just absolutely, especially the, the one in ETU. Um, that's JP uh, was the one with loaded die, not I. Sorry, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he just didn't use them. Actually, had loaded die. Um, <laughs> Clint says life is cheap in the Deadlands. They're essentially El Cheapo characters. <laughs> it <laughs> oh, is it's it's sad. kind of true. Yeah. Um, anything else? We just got a couple minutes left um, before we wrap up. Did I did I miss any questions? Did R.D. Armand have another question? That I oh yeah. Do the ghost steel knives have a critical failure condition? Like, do they burst into flame or something? Um, let me read off what it means to have a ghost knife, because Clint pointed this out to me. So, any metallic weapon can be custom forged from ghost steel to make it far more sharp and doable, but it's prohibitively expensive. A ghost steel weapon adds plus one to damage, gains AP one, or adds plus one to existing AP and increases hardness by plus five and costs five times the listed price. So that's a ghost steel weapon. Now, 
I feel um, that uh, a anything that uses ghost steel, so or ghost rock rather, so ghost steel, a pickaxe imbued with ghost rock and ghost powder and ghost steel, um, they can malfunction. Uh, and sometimes that malfunction can be rather catastrophic. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll play with that. <laughs> that's something to, that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't love this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, Zach says they, uh, that Zach McGinnis says that you should still get a novice attribute boost for your novice advance. Uh, I don't know that that's true. Uh, I, I don't know that you get an advance. I've never, I've never gotten it. I remember talking to JCC about this in wild cards, whether we got an advance having been novices, but I don't know that you do i might be wrong though i might be asking clint to to double check the rules on that because i don't want to cheat you guys in advance here but uh, i don't think that you get another attribute bonus um just God by being man. novices Extra murder uh, salt. yeah <laughs> i think you do even if you buy it with a perk point is that what you're saying i think you you have the option to get an attribute uh well if, if you use about? if you use perk points yes but but um you get you can if you advance when you advance you get to raise an attribute but right. um uh only uh, once per rank only once that, per that, rank but i don't right. believe you can advance a attribute point in your novice rank But I'm, I, it, it looks like I might be wrong with that, though. I think you can in novice, unless I'm misunderstanding what you're talking about. But um. so basically, um, when you when you advance, not your next rank, but when you advance, so you have three advances in novice. Um, uh, you can um, you can raise your attribute point if you want. That's one option for you. You can use a novice yeah. advance to raise an attribute. Okay. Yep. So do we do we get to raise that? Uh, it's an it's an advanced option when you when you advance or when uh, you level up. Yeah, you haven't advanced yet. So when uh, you when you take your next advance, then you have the option to raise an attribute if you would like to. You can raise an attribute. You can choose two skills uh, to raise, or you can um, uh, uh, take an edge. So since you, you get two perk points uh when you advance that you can use you can also raise a skill above an uh an attribute but yes. only one skill like yeah because it costs double so you can only do one skill um yeah. so you can either raise two skills to equal or below your trait level or raise one skill above your trait level your connected trait yeah yeah um okay I am excited. I am excited to jump into this feet first. We're head first, you know, honestly. Uh, with, butt first, with, free with, baby. Butt first. <laughs> with the chaos, <laughs> the chaos uh, that, that reigns supreme here. So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, uh, do consider supporting us on Ko-Fi. Let me go, let me go to my, to my script here uh, as you were. Okay. Um, let us go around the table and, uh, everybody tell us where they can find you. Uh, we'll use a uh, exclamation point socials. I believe we'll pull up all of your, your Twitter handles, but let people know where they can find you, where they can see you next. And, uh, any, any other pertinent info you want to give away. Uh, let's start with Nick. Hi. Um, my Twitter is at by underscore rogues, but I also stream on Twitch, um, uh, usually on Mondays and Thursdays 
and my Twitch is just by rogues, no underscore. And then I have my own D and D podcast with infinity break, uh, which you can find mm-hmm. us infinity break 23 on Twitter. Awesome. Uh, no. Uh, hello everybody. My name is Gnome. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Nomadic. I do TTRPG things in TTRPG spaces. And do I have anything coming up? Uh, I have a morning talk show. I <laughs> guess that's kind of what I do. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern time, me and the wonderful Eris Avad talk stuff. Usually about TTRPGs and the way of the world uh, while sharing a cup of coffee. Uh, I love it. I love it. Um, Megan. Hi, I'm Megan Caves, and uh, you can find me. Best place to keep up with whatever is happening is uh, on my Twitter. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you can catch me right now. Uh, Harbingers, my show on my um my production company, Gone Rogue Entertainment, on my YouTube. You can catch the season finale this Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, I'm going to be taking the GM chair. It is also Savage Worlds. And I'm telling you all, I haven't told anyone else, but um, the setting, the Savage World setting that both season one and season two of Harbingers has taken place in, that has been hidden from the cast and hidden from the audience, well, maybe it might just be revealed. So uh, should t- tune in, <laughs> tune in on Friday. For I, that. I thought you were going to reveal it right here, and I was going to be like, "No, oh, oh okay. no, you have to come watch for that." But it just might, it just might indeed. Um, so yeah, check that out. You can follow um, uh, Harbingers at Harbingers RPG on Twitch, fa- uh, not Twitch, um, <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, Gone Rogue Entertainment. So it's Gone Rogue E and T, same places, YouTube. Uh, backslash gone rogue entertainment to catch that um i'm also doing axion with uh cheyenne and the the guys over at valor studios we're recording starting tomorrow very excited about it that that is also savage worlds it is a steampunk space 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 opera steampunk that cheyenne has created this whole world i think it's gonna be cool um so get ready for that and i have ladies of lake that's come just just follow just (laughs) just uh, doing all of the things it's all happening at once. Sometimes I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs. So, you know, it goes back and forth. It's not all at once time. <laughs> uh, thank you, Megan. Noir. Hey, that's me. Hi, everybody. I'm Noir. You can find me all over the internet as the Noir Nigla. That's Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. I'm the community manager for Evil Genius Games. We have our Kickstarter going for uh, Everyday Heroes, the spiritual success of the D20 Modern. Uh, and uh, I host a morning show on Saturdays called Morning Ritual. We just had uh, Matt Mercer on. The VOD should be coming up tomorrow, so please check that out. And uh, I'm trying to start a civil war in the TTRPG community between people that put dice in their mouth and people that know better. So, um, <laughs> responsibly. Oh, don't no. watch our dice review video. No, no, no crotch, no crotch. No, no, stop the crotch. Wash, so, <laughs> wash, wash your dice, y'all. Yeah, you're dirty. Dice. You're nasty. <laughs> so if you're interested in participating in that war. Um, uh, me and my partner are making logos for the different teams on that side of the war. We have a poll going on my Twitter, so you can uh, make your voice known for what side of this war that you're on. But uh, other than that, that is me. Awesome. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, my name's uh, Dom Zook. You can find me at Gadzook on Twitter uh, or Saving Throw Show anywhere. Uh, you can catch up on all of our shows on our YouTube and many of them are also available as podcasts, including Wild Cards, our Savage Worlds show that uh, ran for many seasons and covered covered Deadlands, it covered East Texas University, and we did a bunch of uh, uh, interludes that that just were all kind of homebrewed settings and stuff like that. So, uh, if you want to get your Savage Worlds fix in, definitely check that out. Uh, and remember, if you are watching on YouTube, to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell to be notified. Uh, when new content is posted on, on the channel. Honestly, I can't tell you how many people watch our content and haven't subscribed. It's free. Just just do it. Why not? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, if you and if you enjoy this, like I said, you can watch Wild Cards. You can watch Megan's Mysterium games. You can watch our Savage sixty seconds. We do a lot of Savage Worlds content on this channel, so there's a lot to watch. It's all on our on our YouTube. Um, uh, if you want a say in what we create, if if maybe Savage Worlds isn't quite your cup of tea, or you want to experience new game systems, well you're in the right place because that's exactly what the RPG Exploration Society does. We have covered many systems from the new Avatar uh, role-playing game to the new Dune role-playing game. Uh, we've covered Cold Shadows, which was a, a spy game. Um, and mm. so many things. We also have All Games No Masters, which uh, plays a bunch of role-playing games which do not need a GM to play. Uh, so we have a lot of content and plenty of other content many 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 other shows uh on our channel that have played a vast myriad sundry games uh of role-playing games here on this channel so uh, uh definitely go check out the youtube or the wiki if you're looking for a specific thing because it's easy to find on the wiki uh also if you want to have a voice in what we do in the future consider supporting us on uh ko-fi uh joining the exploration society really helps us keep going and you it's basically a vote it tells us that this is content that you like and that you want to see um so please do that join our discord uh we'll chat about this particular episode you can see uh we have we have a specific channel for rpg exploration society and you can just chat about anything if you have savage worlds questions or whatever you can just come and join us um we just talk shop all day long so come on to our discord um, and sorry if that made a loud noise. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. We've been saving throw. Thank you. We are back next week with uh, gameplay. We're jumping into it. So I hope that you can come back. Tell your friends. Watch the VOD when it comes out on YouTube. And um, I will shut up now and let you all go. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.